Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back to our regular community. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently trading at 32,495, down 1.53%. Ethereum trading at 1949, down 2.41%. We can see the stable coins, USDC, DAI, USDT, BUSD. They are registering money flowing into the stable coins. I'd like to just quickly help you with something. When a person generally trades through a stable coin, what they do is they convert their native fiat currency. It could be US dollars, pounds, euros, Aussie dollars, Hong Kong dollars, whatever it is, it's not important, Thai baht. They convert it into a stable coin, USDC or DAI, USDT, BUSD. That then pairs with something like Ethereum USDT or Bitcoin USDT or BNB, BUSD. BUSD is the native token that's used on Binance. What happens is when people convert to USDT in the first place, they pay fees. When they buy a particular, say they buy Ethereum or buy Bitcoin, they get the Bitcoin. When they trade out, they trade back generally to that stable coin. It's just an interesting thing. They don't generally trade back to fiat. They generally trade back because fiat has a limited number of options, especially to buy alts. Let's just go and have a quick look at the Ethereum tokens. If you're new here, I'd like to let you know that everything I do for you is free. Twice a day, seven days a week, I share my experience as a full-time crypto trader. My goal is to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. Okay, let's get into it. A lot of people are worried right now. Is the price going to fall? Is it going to collapse to 20,000, 15,000, 10,000? or even zero. I'd just like to show you something. This is an important technical indicator, the RSI relative strength. It's showing an upward trend here, while price is showing a downward trend. Relative strength is literally what it's saying. It's growing in strength underneath the crypto engine of Bitcoin. It's growing in technical strength. You can see here it's decreasing in price. This is called a bullish divergence because the strength is growing. Have a look at this. You see, this is called a bearish divergence. The strength is coming down here. You can see that it's coming down, but the price is going up. This divergences always tend to reflect some change in trend. As you saw here in this area, price really came down hard. That should give you a bit of confidence to know that there is a massive amount of accumulation going on underneath here. I've called it out many times, but I'm just trying to give you different perspectives on how to look at that. Continuing on a little bit further on that concept, I just would like to point out a property of Bitcoin. Now, a couple of community members have asked the question, which is very fair. Statistically, are two cycles enough to predict this current cycle? The answer is that that's really all we've got. We do have cycles before the 2012, but they're very, very low in statistical probability when it comes to actually using them in an intelligent manner. The 2012 halving forward with these three cycles, the 2016 halving with these three cycles inside it, it's the best we've got. If we had something better, we'd certainly use that, but this is sufficient. I'd like to point out a really important aspect, property of Bitcoin. Do you see this 2012? This is the bull market peak right here. There's a dotted green line running across into the second, well, the 2016 cycle. You see that one there? When price gets above, why don't I just zoom in there for you? When price gets above here, what happens is that it doesn't cross this previous peak. 
this previous peak of the 2012, it doesn't cross it until it has a parabolic run up. Everybody in that particular cycle, in the 2016 cycle, was screaming, it's all over, it's all over. My opinion on it was, it hasn't had an exponential blow off top. That is not probabilistically sound. I called in here a low on this. You see that red bar there? I said, that's the low because it's capitulation. That matched up almost pretty much perfectly with this low. You can see from there, it went much higher. Now remember, this is the 2016 cycle, the green sun. I would like to point out something that you should keep in mind. When prices come up, and they will, no matter what other people are saying, they will come up, notice this red bar. This red bar comes up and tries to retest that top. This is an important aspect of Bitcoin price movement. Just be aware of that. There are opportunities to scale out and accumulate more or just accumulate more when you get this kind of capitulation event. It will happen. Now, let's fast forward. You see that green line? You see the red line of the bear market low? That also doesn't cut the previous cycle high. That is an incredibly important concept as well. When we go to line three, this is the peak of the 2016 cycle up here. Now, that goes across the top into our current cycle. Look at this price action, exactly the same as last time. A huge capitulation event, which nails in basically the bottom. When we come down here, we are not expecting it to go very much lower than its current price. Then from there, what do we expect? We expect it to go up, ramp up here. This is my estimation on how I believe things will go. It will ramp up, go past, and then scale back, touch that top, and then shoot basically to the moon up here. Now, an important thing to understand, in the 2012 cycle, this is the blue sun cycle here, this gap. This was the time period of the blue cycle. The green sun happened 43% longer than that. We would expect a 40% 43% increase on this current cycle. That's why we have a white sun. But everybody will think it will stop at the green. And I think, again, they will be proven wrong, just like in this particular case, in the 2016 cycle. Now, how do I sum that all up for you? I don't believe it's going to 20K. I don't believe it's going to pierce this previous all-time high. If it does, it's some kind of black swan event. And we know, like the COVID crisis, we can't do anything about it. We don't even bother preparing for it. If we prepare for it, just like Peter Lynch's quote, we'll just lose money. Let's not do that. We need to be strong like iron. So let's look into probably why you're in Bitcoin in the first place. You could have looked at the uh, stock indices if you're in the US, say the S&P 500 or whatever stock exchange that is relevant. You would look at gold and you would compare the S&P, for example, to gold. And you can see the S&P really outperforms gold. And then you would look across to the crypto space and say, whoa, look at that. Over 10 years with all the crashes, all the corrections, COVID, everything happening. That's quite a good return. And then you would say, what is that year on year? Okay, the S&P 500 is returning 13% every year, year on year for 10 years. Gold is sparkling at a 1% return year on year on year over the past 10 years. Bitcoin is sparkling as well, returning 118% year on year on year for 10 years. Now, that's why you're in. But what is the dark side of these incredible percentage gains? The answer is this, volatility. When I was teaching first and second year stats, this is standard deviation was what I taught, amongst other things. Now, what the heck is this? I'll just show you. These little funny symbols, all this means 
is this is a data point, this is the average. So it's the average variability across a data set of the number of observations normalized. That's all it is. But what the heck does that mean? If a, I was a conventional stats lecturer, which I never was, I would show you something like this. Oh, look at this, the risk free rate and sigmas all over the place. And wow, look how complex this is. But you know what I do? I don't like complex things. I like Yoda. I like C3PO, Darth Vader. I would show you this. I would say, the risk, which is that standard deviation, the variability around the average return or the average value. When you have very low risk, you have a very low return. Go for gold. I mean, we can go back and look at it if you like. So gold down here is very low risk and it's incredibly low return. S&P is better return, but it's also risky. Now, when you look at the 118% per year, year on year, guess what? It's risky. Okay, what does it all mean? Let's do one, two, three, four, five. What it means, one, two, three, four, five, is how I taught first and second year stats to my students. I don't believe in complexity. Complexity just makes people really ignorant. I could give you something like this and you'd say, Dr. Ken, you are so smart, but I'm not smart at all. This is smart. It's all about knowledge transfer. When you get up here, high risk, high return is Bitcoin. I always say crypto is volatile. Do you know what I'm actually referring to? I'm referring to the standard deviation, the risk of, that's the risk. The variation in price each day is wicked. You're experiencing it now. It goes positive and negative. The negative is really hard to deal with. But if you understand crypto is way up here, gold is way down there, bonds below it, and stock, the stock market is just a little bit up, you'll, you'll be much better off because you'll understand. And everything is about understanding. In episode 124, which was the earlier episode to this one, I hope you've seen it because there's a lot of really, really important information in there. We talked about inflation. This is the 10 year inflation rate. This is the five year inflation rate. This, that blue line up here, this is the inflation rate. You see that gold line? That's Bitcoin. I see so many people say, this is the inflation rate. and the inflation rate, when the inflation goes up, Bitcoin will go down. Do you see that here? Does inflation suggest that Bitcoin? So, for example, inflation is going up. What's Bitcoin doing? It's going up. But people don't overlay Bitcoin on the charts that they look at. They just make outrageous guesses. That's why I look at the data always. Inflation came down here. What did Bitcoin do? It came down. All right. And if we look at the five year rate, we can see inflation goes up, Bitcoin goes up, inflation comes down, Bitcoin goes down. What's this? Ooh, what's that little tail? That's the 5.4% US revised inflation rate. They were expecting about 4.9%. Guess what? Catalytic for Bitcoin. But what is inflation? Inflation is basically money burning. It's the general increase in prices and the fall in purchasing power of money. Now, what does that mean? If you put your money in the bank, it will get eroded in terms of buying power. If you put it under the mattress, it'll get eroded even more. If you put it in stocks, not too bad, it will improve. If you put it in gold, not too bad, it will improve. If you put it in Bitcoin, really not too bad but the issue is you have to deal with the volatility so summing this up inflation is good for bitcoin and if you saw episode 124 you already know that episode 124 also talked about the stronger dollar this is why i do a trend analysis i think it is the most extensive trend analysis of any single youtube channel and that's what i'm focusing on excellence always it's a rule that i live by now 
what do we see here? People say there's an inverse correlation between the dollar and Bitcoin. Okay, as the dollar strengthened here, you can see this price behavior. Bitcoin increased. That's called a direct relationship. As the dollar decreased, what did Bitcoin do? Oh, heck, it decreased as well. Now the, uh, the dollar is improving. What do you think Bitcoin is going to do? It's going to improve. A stronger dollar is good for Bitcoin. But you already know that if you saw episode 124. But what about the grayscale Bitcoin trust unlocking? Oh no, what does that mean? Okay, and if you saw episode 124, again, you already know, but I'll just go through it in case you're not quite sure. Grayscale is for high net worth individuals. The minimum investment requirement is 50,000 US dollars. So if you have a extra $50,000 just lying around sun baking somewhere, you can put it into GBTC. Now, what do we know about high net worth individuals? They understand money. That's how they became high net worth individuals. They're kind of like the little Yoda characters that we talk about in those sort of funny stories where we talk about C3PO and just to make it a bit fun. Now, what's Yoda going to do down here? He is going to sell. No, that's what C3PO does. What Yoda will do, he will accumulate. He will accumulate for lots of really good financial reasons. Now, GBTC is the, you can see the red and the green behind it. This is the price of Bitcoin overlaid. I always want to reveal the secrets of crypto to you. So I show you everything I possibly can. GBTC is still under resistance, but so is Bitcoin. We can see, we know the relative strength in Bitcoin is accumulating. We know there's a bullish divergence. What's going to happen here? Of course, there will be buying Bitcoin. There will be more Bitcoin in the GBTC fund, in the trust. I'm also starting to measure the number of Bitcoin in each of the indices and stocks that I track across the market. You would have seen that in episode 124 as well. Let's quickly sum it up because I really want you to be confident. The price has reached about the lowest. Personally, I think it can go. Forget about it crossing $20,000. We know that Bitcoin is incredibly volatile. It goes up and down. There's the fun little formula. There's the risk and return. We know all about that. Inflation is burning away money. Inflation means that we've got to put it somewhere. Under the mattress is not a real good idea. So let's put it in Bitcoin. That's just a general good thing. When GPTC unlocks, and by the way, it's unlocking all the time, the people with lots and lots of money will see this as a fantastic buying opportunity and get in. So we expect that number here of 654,600 Bitcoin to increase. Okay, what else do we know? Stronger dollar, dollar is moving in positive correlation with Bitcoin. Stronger dollar, stronger Bitcoin. Finally, we know that there is a bullish divergence. The strength under the hood of price is increasing. It's doing the opposite of what happened here. Price increased and then it collapsed because there was a divergence here. We can see that there's an increase and a decreasing price. That means Bitcoin is about to go up. We never know where the bottom is. We can only do our best to assume where it is, but it looks to be around now. In our community, we're really disciplined. Rule 174, T cubed. We look at the trend, which was the previous episode, 124. We look at timing, which is this actual episode, 125. That will help you with the trigger as well. So we're using Rule 1122, the KS method, to understand the timing of when you pull the trigger. Let's do a, just a really quick new sentiment analysis. What do we know about the news? It's very misleading. Bitcoin falls to 32,500. <gasps> As inflation hits, 
What do we know about inflation? We already knew that in episode 124. These facts don't bear up. Be really careful of the news. Bitfarms, that's something we analyzed in episode 124 as well. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano fell negative. Visa to approve a Bitcoin spending card. Well, that's positive. Nassim Taleb, he's the author of The Black Swan. He now reckons that Bitcoin's real value is zero. Okay, good one. You better tell Bitcoin that. It's currently trading at $32,393. It doesn't believe you. But that's okay. Everybody can have their opinion. Bitcoin mining ban for China. Of course, it's an easy decision because they want the digital one. Signs of whale accumulation. We already know that. There's a bullish divergence. Elon's at it again. He's sparking Bitcoin community ire. Oh, Elon, what do we do with you? Zebpay launches a new app. Okay, well, that seems positive. And the same one. It's, it's really neither here nor there. But if we fact check the news on this, this is why you really have to watch the trend. Please don't skip through it. A lot of people say to me, Ken, can I just get some timestamps in there? It's kind of like this. Pretend that you're in my stats class, in first and second year stats. And you say, Ken, can I just skip, you know, this class and that class? And, you know, can you just hand me the exam? at the end with all the answers. That's not how it works in life. We have to put in the effort. I really guard your time. I spend probably, I'm scared to tell you how much time it takes for me to prepare these videos, but I compress your time as much as possible by rehearsing, 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 and making sure everything is tight. Please watch the whole video all the way through then you will definitely add to your blessings financially and otherwise. Okay, let's check out what Bitcoin is up to. In episode 124, it was trading at 32,479. It's now trading at 32,380. It had this kind of steep sell off and people got so worried. People were reaching out to me, Ken, what's going on? It really comes down to knowing the trend. If you know the trend, things like this just cannot fake you out. It's really important to understand where the engine is headed to. Okay, so what is going on right here? It's really back almost to structural support. It does have structural resistance above, but what's happening now, and this is why I was saying it's so important for the shorts to come in because when shorts get liquidated, they actually drive the price exponentially higher. If you're a short, really be careful. I'm not against shorts. I'm not against longs. Anybody can do either. It just manage your risk, please. It's going to be a fairly tumultuous time coming up. Let's have a look at how the Bitcoin longs measured in green and shorts are going, relatively speaking we can see this big uptake in shorts. This is really good, even though it seems counterintuitive. Of course, it seems counterintuitive because that's the nature of investing. If it's not logical, it's probably correct. This is fuel for an upward rally. We see that many times. Let's have a look at what Ethereum's doing. We see the Ethereum longs decreasing a lot relative to the shorts. The shorts have decreased as well. This is really fascinating. Well, let's have a look at Max Payne and options expiration. I wonder if Max Payne has turned around. Let's have a quick look at Bitcoin. We can see for the end of the month expiration, the Max Payne price is still 36,000. Okay, so that hasn't changed. What about Ethereum? Ethereum, Max Payne is still 2400, so that hasn't changed. Okay, so basically, I wonder if the composition of puts and calls has changed. Yep, that has definitely changed since yesterday. If I call you up, that's a really cool thing. I love to call people up. Calls are going long. If someone puts someone down, that's not very nice. That's a short. So, what we see here, the calls 
are increasing. But look at Ethereum. The puts, the shorts are increasing. Hmm, very fascinating. So what does this mean? If the puts are increasing, that means that there could be downward pressure on Ethereum. But don't forget, these change around all the time. The calls have been increasing on Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin, basically, Bitcoin's fingerprint is impacting every single alt, including Ethereum. As these calls increase, they'll liquidate these puts in Ethereum. Just be aware of that. Let's check out total liquidations. It's good to see we're getting back to average volume. 24 hour liquidations are 410.68 million with 91,801 traders liquidated. Over the past 12 hours, around 78% of liquidations were long. We can see a big liquidation here on the 15 minute. These short liquidations are associated with upward price. Long liquidations are associated with downward price momentum. Let's quickly look across to net realized profit and loss. We can see some losses have been made today. Not surprising, the price went down. So what does that mean? Does that mean that people are not putting their money into Bitcoin? Let's check that out. To do that, we go to the stablecoin supply ratio SSR oscillator. We see, in fact, stablecoins are flowing into Bitcoin. And this is really that bullish divergence that I was talking about earlier. Under the hood, inside the engine of crypto, Bitcoin is springing. It's getting ready to spring. Let's have a look at psychological safety and liquidations. We're still not really got up to anything large in terms of liquidations. Prices come down, but liquidations are really low. That's probably why the max pain of the options expiration, max pain is where the majority of options expire worthless. It's pretty important to know that around 75% of options actually expire worthless anyway. The GPT, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust Unlock is coming up in a couple of days. I would personally expect that to be very bullish. We know that the max pain level is $36,000 for here. It's above that. That's also quite bullish. If we look at fear and greed, we have extreme fear today at 21. A lot of people, almost the last of the people holding will now be selling. I really hope that's not you. But if it is, don't worry, we all learn by losses. Having been in the markets over 20 years, your losses are the tuition fee that you pay to be in the market. But when you get it together, you can really be a blessing to yourself and those you love. Before we look at the top seven or specific cryptos, let's look across the crypto total market cap to understand what's exactly happening here. You know Bitcoin's price dominates all these movements. And if you don't, if that's new to you, I'll show you what that means. I've just superimposed Bitcoin's price movement across the total market cap. Now, total crypto market cap, that is the market cap of every single coin inside the crypto industry. You can see when Bitcoin goes down, the market goes down. When it goes up, the market goes up. This is very, very common behavior. I call it Bitcoin's fingerprint. Okay, I'll just turn that off so you can see a little bit more clearly. We know Bitcoin came down, found a level of support, and then bounced back up. This is exactly what the crypto market is doing as well. The crypto market is currently $1.312 trillion. It has structural overhead resistance at around 1.43 trillion. As a in complete sector is seeking to get above this resistance and turn that into support. When it does that, the next level will be around here. We would just change this to here. Just give you a bit of a quick technical, technical lesson. Just draw that to the top and the top. Don't forget, with technical analysis, you're always an artist. 
So the potential is for the industry to come up and hit that particular line. Now, what does that mean in relative terms? If we look at that, we've got about a 4% increase on the current price. That's not really a lot, but it is definitely something. When it gets over this particular resistance, it will seek to take out this structural resistance. Let's get a bit deeper. We always go through the analysis saying what the top seven or eight are. So the top eight in this case, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, Binance Coin, Cardano, XRP, USD Coin, and Dogecoin. Let's have a look at the greatest gainers over the past 24 hours. Axie Infinity, Internet Computer. Good to see Internet Computer up there. It's been very red for a long time. STX, XDC, REV, UST, DAI, TUSD. These are stable coins, so they really don't play into our analysis. Let's have a look at the greatest losses over the past 24 hours. Atom, Synthetix, T-Fuel, Uni, Tezos, Sia Coin, KCS, and Tel. Let's go the other way. Greatest seven day percent gainers, Axie Infinity, AXS, Flow, STX, Leo, Luna, and stable coins don't count really. Let's go the other way. Seven day greatest percent losses, Telcoin, Uni, CRV, Sushi, Theta, Rune, Sol, and KSM. As part of our community's edge, we look through Binance derivatives. We're really interested in the change in price of the contract in the past 24 hours. 24 hour trading volume is $52.5 billion. 24 hour open interest is 6.5 billion. Now we'll just have a little look through here to identify anything around 10% and above. Axie Infinity, AXS, doing quite well. There's a lot of open interest in that. CHR, we look here because there's so many hidden gems that you would miss otherwise. Let's keep on going. Nothing really, okay, storage, that's good. So OGN is nearly at 10%. CTK, this is just a really cool way. Lit, unfi, not bad, not bad. This is a way to look under the hood, look into the engine of crypto and try and understand what's happening before other people catch on. That's an edge that you always need an edge. Let's have a look at Ethereum's technical analysis. We know that there's a lot of shorting activity on Ethereum by the number of ports. Look at this, very, very good buying opportunities. Price is negatively biased. Prices tend to come down. A couple of people have said, Ken, when do you pull the trigger? One, you need to understand the trend. If you don't understand the trend, if you can't answer the question, for example, how does inflation impact Bitcoin through the charts with no bias? That means you shouldn't pull the trigger yet. You really need to kind of understand what you're doing. We can't skip lessons. It's just like being at school. It's like skipping grades or skipping forms or skipping years at university. We just have to put in the hard work. So what do we see here? There's a good level of structural support at 1909. Current price of Ethereum is 1944. We can see it's bounced from that structural support. That's a good thing. It's nearly at the level of resistance above it, which is 1960. Ethereum has another level above at 2020. You're probably more interested in what the supports are at the moment. Very strong support at 1909, and then support below that at 1875 and 1832. I always suggest that you catch the falling knife because catching falling knives is a insanely profitable thing to do. Buying capitulation events is the gold at the end of the rainbow, literally. It's what professional traders and investors gear their whole lives up to do. Let's have a look at Binance Coin, BNB. Currently, Binance Coin is trading at 302.88. 
it's above structural support at 291.52 and you can see that there's a, another diagonal level of structural support coming in here as well. That's going to hit at about 278.17. That's quite a lot of support underneath there. The next resistance above is 309 and above that is 318. I'd like to share rule 29 with you. Paper losses are fake. What it really means, paper losses feel very, very real. There's no question about it. But if you don't sell, if you don't do a transaction, the loss can recover and turn into a profit. I love this comment Rec made. My loss might be fake, but, but the nagging from my wife is real. <laughs> Go on, wrecked. Definitely. <laughs> Pal H said it's really, it's fascinating how fast retail sentiment can change from to the moon to it's over. I wonder what percent of people who enter the crypto market this year will stay and make some money. It's really hard to keep emotions in check when you've been burnt out by the markets, when you've suffered major losses, that is the doorway to professional trading. You have to have literally been burnt alive and just be so stubborn that you refuse to give up. That's the path that we walk when we become professional. When you get to that, you understand that losses are the tuition fee that the market demands of you. To be professional. Those losses are stepping stones to a beautiful life. Just remember, paper losses are fake. Let's have a look at Ada Cardano. Ada is currently trading at 124.58. It's just literally at structural support right now. It just dipped down before to a lower level of structural support at 121.27 and rebounded very well. It has higher levels of resistance at 128.48 and 131.15. Let's have a look at XRP. XRP is currently trading at 60.70. It has support below at 59.99 and 58.55. It also has structural support at 56.94. Resistance above is 61.36 structural resistance at 6317. Remember, Bitcoin's fingerprint impacts all alts. As Bitcoin increases its relative strength, it will turn around and break that trend. For example, like this, relative strength is coming up. As relative strength continues to increase, price will continue to increase, breaking through this particular area. It may take a little bit of time to do it. It doesn't necessarily mean it will do it in the next minute, but just keep this in mind. Just like we had a bearish divergence here because there was a fall in the RSI relative strength indicator. I think that's really helpful for you to bear in mind. Remember, Bitcoin rules all alts with a very iron fist. So it's important to understand what's happening to Bitcoin because then you can map out what will happen to your beloved alts. Okay, let's have a look at Dogecoin. Doge is currently trading at 19,568. It's above support at 18,753 and 17,980. Resistance at 19,990 and 21,095. We know that when Bitcoin turns around, it's going to do incredible things to Doge. Doge, I believe, has a lot of latent power underneath it. It's also a top alt. Let's see how we go with that. Just like Doge, Dot Polkadot has been hit pretty hard. It also works in reverse. Remember that sigma, that delta, that standard deviation. When the deviation is against an alt, it goes down. But when it turns positive, it reflects that angle. So that's really important to understand. Polkadot is currently trading at 13588. It has support below at 12911 and $12. It has resistance above at 14023 and 14748. 
I'd like to share rule 219 with you. Be kind to yourself. When you make losses, when you feel like you haven't made the right decision, it's really easy to be unkind to yourself. If you knew better, if you could pick the lotto draw numbers for next week's lotto draw, you would always be right. We can't do that. We can only go on probability. When you learn, just realize that it's just learning. Losses are the stepping stones to learning. Don't worry too much about it. I think that there was, well, there was an incredible comment from a community member who talked about leverage. Actually, I'm just going to find that for you. I think that's so important to share. Here we go. This is from China, the size you don't see. He's been investing in traditional markets for over 18 years. He understands it's not about timing the market, but about time in the market, which is incredibly accurate. Hold and back your judgment. Focus on the status of the market. That's really important. China's been through 50% drops in his portfolio twice because of black swan events. He made all his losses back and always ended up in profit because he refused to sell. He used time as, as his friend, not as his enemy. Very good, China. Just beautiful work, my friend. Please, to, please try to block out the white noise. That's all the influencers who say everything is dropping. It's all, it's all bad. Really try to look at the data. There are some really good influencers out there, some really wonderful people who want to take care of you and want to look after you. Look for those as well. I'd like to share rule 107 with you. Don't be defined by your past. Do you know the path to wisdom is error? The path to knowledge is failure. If you look at the past, it's just a series of mess ups, one after another, after another. They say that the wisest of us all make the most mistakes. That's very true. There's nothing wrong with mistakes. The only thing about mistakes that's ever wrong is that we don't learn from them. If you learn from them, if you become a learning machine, you will become a true blessing to everyone around you, but most of all to yourself. Please don't be defined by your past. Wipe the slate clean. Look at life with new eyes. If you've made losses, catastrophic losses, welcome to the club. We all do it. That's the stepping stone to ultimate success. Don't worry about it. Just throw it away. I just like to share a community members sharing with us for you. This is from Willow Hoops. I said, never trade at margin. And Willow Hoops said, I'm going to trade futures at 125x. Yow. He had some really good advice. Always be on isolated, never cross. In case your stop loss fails, all your account assets will be forfeited in cross. If you don't understand this and you're using this kind of leverage trading, please stop using it. If you read this comment, it's very, very clever. Limit your losses. Willow Hoops limited his losses to $5 a trade and isolated that money into an account where it couldn't access the other funds in his account. That is absolutely correct. But Willow Hoop says, don't trade these leveraged devices unless you're not amazing at spot trading. So if you're a fantastic spot trader, that's good. Get into it. Why not? Could be your edge. But follow this advice. Make sure it's isolated. It's really important because if you're getting fees, this is a quite an incredible concept. Willow Hoop said, that he wanted to hold a particular position, but because the fees are so high at 125X, it's about a year's worth of his salary in his country. Oh my goodness. 
that's the devastation of fees that's your slippage there's a lot of things to be really really careful but this is learning from the past this is moving on becoming stronger well done willow hoops this is really beautiful work and thank you for sharing with the community if you have stories like this that could help our community because you're part of that community if you can do that we would love to hear them it's really helpful to share your experiences and your learnings let's just do one more chain link which is quite a focus of the community we can see chain link just getting over its resistance fantastic work it's trading at 16925 right now it has structural resistance at 17209 the next level of support is 17777 it has support below at 16698 and support below that at 15900 to sum up this video we know the underpinning structure of crypto is still in place and it's kind of nice to see some green throughout the market but realistically i'm not surprised by this and you shouldn't be either we know that relative strength is increasing inflation is good the dollar is good there's so many things that are lining up for bitcoin at the moment it's really important you understand the trend if you don't understand the trend you're going to be in a lot of trouble you won't be able to sleep at night this is such a, a violently volatile market it's just horrible but remember that volatility also works for you when it works for you it's fantastic just think about that i hope you found this content useful everything i do for you is free please be aware of scammers let's just pop over to ethereum for a little while have a look at that i do these videos to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love please say hi and let me know where you're viewing from and if you have any questions i always take the questions of the community really seriously I want to provide the best value I can possibly provide for you. Reach out to me. Let me know. I appreciate it. If you'd like twice daily updates, seven days a week on price movements in the crypto market, please subscribe to YouTube and Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Let's just go back to the main market. There we go. Stay safe out there. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.